Coming up this week on Kiss My Collectibles, we take a look at the brand new LP from Ace Frehley, Spaceman. One more kiss? Be sure and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay up to date when we post new episodes. This is uh, Kiss My Collectibles podcast, but you knew that. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next episode of Kiss My Collectibles, your source for vinyl toys, bootlegs, and more. I am one of your co-hosts, Jason Herndon, and with me, as always, is... Always and forever, Andrew Scampati. Great to be oh, here. Oh, if I could give you a virtual hug, a I would. A virtual hug. E-hug. Oh, E-hug. Oh, so. <sighs> edit that hey. out. <laughs> no, don't edit that out. That'll be fine. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm not clipping. So, uh, all right. Um, today we, it's just going to be an episode about uh, new stuff that we got. It's just me and Andrew today, and we're going to talk about this new release from Ace Fraley and E1 Entertainment, Spaceman. Did you even open yours yet? Yeah, you did. Yeah, huh. yeah it's open. I, well, of course, oh, I took oh, you pictures just, and I posted. You slipped the side. Mm-hmm. I always slip the side, and so I keep what, the. Keep the silicone on so it. So what I did is I, I took it off, but I had these cool little LP bags. And then if there is a, uh, a hype sticker, I peel the hype sticker off the cellophane and I put it on my, my bag. So I always yes. keep the hype sticker. Essentially what I do is keep the cellophane on it as long as I can. Uh-huh. I'll, still put it, I'll still put it in a sleeve. You know? Now, does that damage the records? Like does the cellophane constrict the actual record once it's open? No. No? No. Oh, yeah, okay. It's loose. It's very loose. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. I've, I've oh. had records for... A lifetime that still have the Longer original. Than I've been alive. Longer than I've been alive. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And okay. I know specifically my Ozzy Osbourne Ultimate Sin. I bought brand new, and it still has the original silphane and hype sticker on it. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's so, pretty cool. so Look, hey, so it, before before yeah. we get into uh, you know new stuff, uh, this this little topic is coming directly from the page. There was someone on the page that was talking about the McFarlane action figures and talking about the different versions that were released. And there's a member, and again, I, I apologize, I don't, I didn't grab what your name was, but please comment. We, I want to give you credit. I'll even put it up on the screen here. This is all you. Uh, someone was just commenting on that how there was an arena or a tour edition of the original 1997 uh, McFarlane action figures, and there was. So you see this picture up right now. I guess this member who is on the page went to the London Finsbury Park show, July 5th, 1997, and by the time this person had gotten to the merchandise stand, they only had the Peter Chris figure left. So what's different about this? Take a look at the bottom, and I'm going to just bring it close to my face here because I'm blind. It says there's a sticker that says Worldwide Tour Edition Kiss 1997. Now, I've never seen this version before. The version looks like it's the first version of the McFarlane action figures, and uh, I don't want to talk about all the versions because we'll probably do a show on that later on. I don't want to shoot my I don't want to shoot my wad right now. And there's a million of them. There's a million of them. But this version looks like it was the first version that had the letter bases and uh, it has this sticker on there and this is sold this is told that had it had been sold say that five times fast no at thanks. the uh, at the merchandise booths on the reunion tour. Now, yeah. did you know about these? Yes, I've always known that there was a tour version, but I had never actually seen one in my in my hand, so mm-hmm. I didn't know that it had that um, emblem on there yes. I, I had no idea i just figured that they you know had stock and took them and sold them on tour you know but uh you know uh, of course that doesn't make a lot of sense because i've always heard of it as a tour version so surely there would have to be a difference somehow but no i was i was unaware yeah. wasn't there a tour version of the Psycho Circus era? I was ones? actually going to mention that next. Yeah. Um, c- because the cool thing about that is the original Psycho Circus action figures came out when the comic book came out. And right. then they were kind of repainted and repurposed. And they said the Psycho Circus Tour Edition. And you could find these basically anywhere. Now, right. what's cool about those, there's a, an, another version called the Arena Edition. And there's a picture of that right now where it says basically the, the Tour Edition figures and has an Arena Edition sticker slapped on the package. Very similar right. to how this sticker was slapped on this Peter Chris figure. Yeah, now, I've, never seen, I've never seen those first editions. Me neither. In, me in neither. Person, no. Now, what's, now, if we're going to go back you know, 21 years when this actually happened, it, n- not everything was the same. And what I mean by that is the Kiss entity now, basically, if it's Kiss, it's going to be um, – they're going to have stock on tour. And it's going to come from the same place that it came from, from, you know, from, from the manufacturer. 
what this looks like to me, this looks like Kiss obviously licensed their likenesses to McFarlane, and then Kissco purchased a stock from McFarlane, slapped their sticker on it, and sold it on tour. That's my best guess. That's my best guess. I mean, it's logical. Sounds logical to me. Yes. Yeah. You know? And you know, we've been yeah. big on logic throughout this entire, you know, this entire show. Go back years and years. The the <laughs> the original cast was always talking about logic. It's just throw logic at it, it starts to make sense. So right. that's what right. I think. And again, I have no proof whatsoever. It's just how it yeah. logically was to me. Because now KISS has Epic Rights and Epic Rights does all the merchandise. So whatever you buy in stores came from Epic Rights. And whatever you go to the merchandise stand also came from uh, came from Epic Rights. But yeah, right. look at this picture and, and and again, super, super cool. Uh, let me see if I can actually find who the poster was on there. Because I just saw it this morning before we're recording this. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to find it to be totally honest with you. <laughs> Regardless. Um, Regardless. Regardless, it's very, very cool. And uh, for all you action figure enthusiasts or completists out there, uh, you yeah. need this version. Yeah, I always see people post, you know, all the versions of the McFarlane uh, figures and all of all of that stuff. And you know, so if you collect those uh-huh. and, uh, and you and, don't have and this, you, and, or you do have this, uh-huh. all four of them, post a picture in the comments of wherever you're seeing this at. If it's on Facebook or on YouTube or wherever. You know, post a picture of them because I'd like to see all four of them beside each other. I would. Yeah. So would I. So, yeah. I'll never find it in the group again. That's I'm looking. I'll never find it. It's all right. New stuff. Do we want to move on to new stuff? New stuff. Do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go? I only have one thing. It's up to you. All right. So. Uh, I mean, I can go first. Yes, please go first. Okay. All right. All right. So I've gotten a few things in uh, lately. Um, I'd actually had them when, when we recorded our last podcast, uh, or most of it, but I, I did, we didn't and, show and them. what was our last episode? It was with Keith Valcourt, and if you Keith click Val- right there, you'll be able to view the episode. Oh, are you going to put one of those things in there? We never do that. We can. It's YouTube annotation. Okay, well, don't forget <laughs> it when you edit. So I won't. Because we've won't. never done that. Uh, so yeah, it was with Keith Valcourt, and we wanted to concentrate mainly on the vault, so I didn't, sh- I didn't show anything. Um, and a lot of this stuff, most of this stuff is common stuff, or, or some of it's newer stuff, um, but, you know, I've recently gotten some things in, and as you can see, I still have not set up my KISS room or my office, and it's it's killing Andrew. But uh, That's um, fine. You know, some of these things a lot of collectors have, and, and I've got a pretty decent KISS collection, uh, but I still try to find as many coin items as I can. And uh, so the first thing uh, I, I got was Very a cool. nice version of the i guess this is the demon belt buckle it's very, cool. it's very clean very clean yep yep looks pretty nice yeah got it a good price so for or a good price for me yeah so uh so there's that and then whoa my mic and then i got this i should have had it out of the bag so i could show it better but uh uh love all of the song books and stuff and uh so i got Ooh. me a nice copy of the it double platinum nice songbook and uh i hate to open these things because they're so brittle but you know they've got the, the yeah, cool photos great photos great cool photos. photos on the inside so yeah oh, look at but that. anyway so also got that for a decent price um and then these things have recently sold out and um once i discovered that they were selling out everywhere i was able to track down a set at um, at Kiss Army Warehouse. I'm mm-hmm. going to pimp him. Why not? KissArmyWarehouse.com. Uh, Steve Stearwalt. That's right. What's up? Steve, Steve Stearwalt had three sets left, and he had taken them down off the website, but I'd reached out to him directly to see if he still had some because I really, really wanted these. Now, all of the Figures Toys Company um, figures that they've done, there's been a lot of sets. Um, I chose to just purchase the 8-inch versions. Um, I felt that the 12 inch versions were a little expensive. Um, I'm a kiss collector on a budget. So if I can't have them all, I'll have the eight inch versions. Cause you could get all four of them for a hundred bucks or 120 yeah, bucks yeah, or yeah, something yeah, yeah. instead of 120 bucks a piece or whatever. They're so, or, no, 70, 70 like, bucks, like 80 a bucks a piece or something. Right. Or something. 80 bucks a piece, yeah, so yeah. 70 or 80 bucks a piece. But anyway, my friend Danny Dabbs bought these when we were in Indy. And uh, I looked at them and just thought, man, these are the most killer looking things. So I went ahead and bought 
a complete set of the Dynasty. You know that does look nice. And Those do look nice, man. They look killer. I love them. The packaging is is killer. Hey, look, Epic Rides, just like you said. Yeah. Hey, so while while you're talking about that, I did get a PM from our esteemed colleague, guest, friend, whomever, Joe Odell, this morning. That figures toys company. They're also redoing in vintage packaging the Dress to Kill and the Alive 12 inches. Look at that, man. So cool. Really? Yeah, he said that. Yeah. He would know, it, man. So they're putting them in in the the vintage Mego packaging. I guess. And I mean, that's that's I'll what have he. To ask Joe about yeah, that, that's what he says. But yeah, hey, man, hey, man, those are cool. You know, those make me want the little Dynasty um, Biff Bang Pow figures. Dude, I want to get the Biff Bang Pals too. At first, well, I know I know we've discussed this before. I mm-hmm. wanted to get the Biff. I did, I wanted to pass the, on the Biff Bang Pal because I didn't think they looked too good. Uh-huh. But um, I definitely want to go back and get them now. But this one, I've seen oh, Peter open. Wow. Look at it's, that. It's killer. It's so killer. So worth it. And now, uh, as far as I know, you're going to have to you're going to have to buy them on the second secondary secondary market. market. Yeah. Um, I know that Figures Toy Company, they I think the last time I looked when I was buying these, they had um, I think they still had Paul and Peter, but were sold out of Gene and Ace or something like that. I don't know what the case is now. I haven't looked since I'm I bought them. I'm going to look right now. Yeah, check it out. Figures but um, and that's it, direct on their on their website. But uh, but I know that um, pretty much everywhere is sold out. And here's Paul. Super super cool. Super yeah. super cool. Super cool. Yes. Super cool. Series two eight, more things. Dynasty. Okay, so eight inch. Ooh, well, all right. So the, the only one, the only one left right now is Paul and Peter for the twelve inch. Right. Ace and Gene are sold out. Now you could still get, you could get a set of eight inch ones. Yeah, you can get the eight inch a, ones. Yeah, a hundred and twenty bucks for a set. Right. Of they're four they're still inch. there, but to get a, you can't get a set from their website uh, of the four twelve inch ones you because two of them are sold. And out. those are twelve right. inches. These are the twelve inch ones. Nice. Yeah. That's why I, I bought them. They're huge. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> They're 12 inches. So, and then um, from my buddy Joe Odell, or our buddy Joe Odell, yeah, Joe Odell, I went ahead and bought a set of the uh, vintage packaging Migos. Man, those look cool. They do look cool. Of course, you know, they replaced the names down here with... I'm okay with the- that. And I'm a little disappointed that uh, the backs are all the same. I mean, it'd have been nice if that had a different picture of each member. Now, would you have felt differently if the back wasn't so gene centric? If it had been something no. more? No, not at all. Yeah. I I think this looks fucking killer. Yes, but but, it... but I think it looks great on jeans. I agree. And I and I, I think agree. they it would be you know cool if they had a you know keep this shot here. I mean, why everyone has to have a Paul and Gene on the back, you know? Well, because you know what KISS stands for. Keep it Simmons what? and Stanley. Keep it Simmons and Stanley. So anyway, I'm not going to show all four of these because, you know. It's exactly the same. They're very cool. It's the exact same box and everything. It just has each member in it. But they look great. And they're very, very, very easy to tell the difference between the originals and, and these yes. uh, these new yes. reissues. So. And uh, and they kind of look cool together. I, I've seen some people post some photos of. Yes, Joe Adele actually did that yeah, on the page. Yeah, you post. Yeah, you know, I think Joe may still have some some uh, sets of these. Yes. So yes. Get on so, Kiss Mike Collectibles on Facebook and buy a set from him. Yes. He's, he's so selling them. Joe actually offered to sell me a set of those, but at the same time that that was happening. Oh. Okay. I got me a pair of these. Yes, baby. So, You're one of the the few lucky ones. Yeah, so the box is super cool. And uh I've already worn these a couple times and they're they're super comfortable. And uh yeah, I mean I enjoy my KISS collection, so yeah, I plan on wearing these and they're they're super, super awesome. And uh and yeah, so uh I'm man, when I first saw these I was like, ah, I don't really know. And then I saw them again and I was like, the box looks cool. And uh and yeah. I think they're very, very cool. Looking, um, they are man. That be, now that, that being said, have you seen the other, the leopard print one? Hideous. 
I'm not a fan. Not, so. a fan. <laughs> not a fan. And those are the ones, like Paul just posted a photo on Twitter yesterday about rehearsing for the end of the road tour. And that's the right. ones that that's the version that he's wearing. But uh, if you look, uh, Tommy posted a photo from Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, which is this weekend. And Tommy's wearing a pair of these. Yep. It's pretty cool. Yeah, they sold out very fast mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, are they going to, will they replenish stock? Who Surely. knows? Who knows? I, I know. mean, I got mine before the official launch. I got them from Saks Fifth Avenue. Right. They had a yeah. couple sets that they put up, so I got on there and I bought it, and uh, and, and yeah, it, they they got to me, and I was like super, 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 super cool. Super. So, cool. Uh, you know, we both we've discussed many times that we enjoy our collections in different ways. Yes. And we like to open your stuff and yeah. and enjoy the things. So, if you got these, would you open these up? Yes, and pose I would. Them and, yeah. Yes, so. I would. I think the packaging is just as important, and uh, I don't know. I'm gonna well, keep them in the package. Well, don't some of those packages aren't aren't those blister packs? Aren't they able to be opened yes. without? Yes, you can open them up, and because uh, I bought the 12 inch Dress to Kill dolls that I've showed on previous episodes before, right? And that's the first thing I did. I opened those those ba- those suckers up, and I I enjoyed them. So yeah. uh, they're on they're on the top of my shelf. The top of my shelf of my action figure display mm-hmm. is it's uh, it's Voltron, Galactus, Dress to Kill, Kiss, and then the original Migos. Yeah, when we had Joe on a couple of episodes ago, he was talking about that. He mm-hmm. t- he said they look so great outside the package. Mm-hmm. He he's got them all out of the package and set up and displayed. And uh, I don't know, I just have I'm one of those guys that likes to keep those things in the package. Well, and if it were and, and if money were no object, I would have two sets have of two. everything. Well, yeah. I mean, here's the thing too. Yeah. Um, you got the space now. It, uh, not not that much space. But you have more space now. <laughs> I have way more space. But uh, yeah, I don't have now. I don't oh, have Joe, enough space uh, to have. A message just came through, Joe Adele. Oh, he's just talking about how how difficult those figures were to find. Tell him that we're uh, talking about him on the show right now. <laughs> uh, so I do have one more thing to show. Yeah, I didn't. Still... I didn't mean to cut you off there, but I know because oh, no, no, I, no. I almost I almost purchased that same set of, of figures from Joe, yeah. and I said to him, "I go, hey man, I'm just gonna get these shoes uh, instead." So I got this. What is I've that? Bid on a, yeah, it's a package. I've bid on a couple of things on eBay and and won a couple of things, and I'm not really sure which one this is because mm-hmm. there's another package that my wife called and said is up at the post office. I should have one up. at my door right now, hopefully. But uh, so anyway, I'm gonna open this up and see what it is. Hmm. We hadn't opened a package live on air in a long time. Do you remember when I opened that Destroyer record live on the air and it was yes. like mutilated? Yes, man. Yes, those were good times. This is not what I thought it was. What is it? I just did a trade um, with a friend on the page. It's going to be there that? for months. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of songbooks. Um, Ooh, unmasked. I just traded for this unmasked songbook. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, very, very, very happy. Let's see. Has it got photos in it? Should have photos in the middle. Look at that. Look at that. Let's see. Look at you squinting because you can't see. Fuck you. Yeah. So cool. I love that gene photo. Yeah. I love that whole whole photo shoot. Yeah, so cool, man. Oh. So, yeah. So, uh, in my quest to complete the the Kiss songbook. I would actually get the, uh, the double platinum songbook. I like how that looks. Yeah. I, like how that looks. I mean, it, you know, it's it's not in the greatest. It, it, you know, it's got wear on it, but you but know. it's gonna. I mean, just how that yeah. stuff was printed back in the yeah. day. I mean, that's why when I when I started purchasing the 2014 reissues, I didn't get Kisteria, obviously. But the only exclusive that I wanted from Kisteria was Double Platinum because I wanted a a, a nice copy of Double right. Platinum. You know, the right. USA copies are always trashed, and if you want like a nice vintage copy, you can go to the Japanese copies. Those are good, right? Uh, but I wanted a nice pristine copy and I, and I got one. Yeah. I, I definitely of the, you know, I bought Kisteria and, um, of course I keep my stuff sealed mm-hmm. for the most part. I bought two copies of all the 2014 reissues mm-hmm. except for the Kisteria exclusives. But I, I would love to get a copy of, uh, the only two I care about having a copy and opening, even though, you know, greatest kiss is the rarest. I would love to have double platinum and killers. Killers is pretty easy to find, though. Yeah, they're pretty easy to find. I just I need to, to I need to buy them, you yeah. know. So yeah. usually when I have 150, 200, 
or three hundred dollars to spend, I usually buy something I don't already have. So. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> so, all right, all right. Is so on to the real reason, tell? the real reason why we're here today. Ace Frehley, Spaceman. A spaceman. A spaceman. So Ace has. Ace has a new record coming out through E1 Entertainment, uh, uh, or Entertainment One, or E1, or you know, like you know how they, yeah. And uh, comes out on the 19th of October, and there are four different vinyl versions out there: three in the U.S. and one from overseas. And uh, so, there are at least two different CD versions as yes, well. Yes. So let me pull up my notes here. And then as we talk about each version, you'll see it on the screen as per usual. If you guys know, this is no secret to you. Yeah. Uh, so the first one that we'll talk about, and that's the one that Jason and I currently have. Damn, stuff is, is the one he dropped on yeah, the floor. It's the one I dropped on the, I didn't drop it on the floor, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's the silver 180 gram vinyl. Um, I'll show mine here in a minute once I get a little, you know, organize some air over here. Yeah, but you, um, can, you can you can throw the pick up, but I, I do want to show the people. Yeah, yeah, super this cool, man. Silver vinyl, super cool. And from what I understand, this is even though it says it's limited, mm-hmm. does it say limited on the 180 gram silver vinyl limited edition? Um, or does it say limited? No, no it, it just, just says 180 gram, gram vinyl plus download card. Okay, as far as I know, this is the standard edition. Mm-hmm. I do not think there's a black vinyl version of this. Mm-hmm. So um, if we hear anything after this comes out, you know, we'll, we'll correct it. But we'll anyway, it yourself. looks great. It's uh, it's it's almost, I don't want to say it's marbled. It's kind of wavy looking. I think that just may be how the pellets are. I think the pellets just lend themselves to marbling when they're being flattened well, out like that. Yeah, but you can get, uh, I mean, you can definitely get a solid, solid color. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but anyway, it, it looks great. It's 180 gram. It's real thick. It's it's very nice. So I haven't played mine yet. Andrew has played I've his. played mine. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I was playing it last night. That's right. I saw it. So so the next version is exclusive to independent record stores that have a website. And you could order from the website. And I'm sorry, this is not the best picture I have, but it's the only one I was able to find in time for the show. It's the orange vinyl, and it has Ace in a spacesuit that kind of looks like the old Elvis record on there. Exactly. And uh, so that's that's very, very cool. Um, the other edition that was just announced yesterday from E1 Entertainment is the signed blue vinyl with a different mm-hmm. cover on it. Yep. So and these, you could order these, uh, you could order all these right now. Uh, and these are all, I guess, within the United States. And then we're going over to the other side of the world, going mm-hmm. to Europe, where they have a purple vinyl that has a different has different artwork on the cover. So yeah, th- it and it, right, all four all four different colors have four different covers. Yes, yes. yes. Two yeah. of them are from the same photo shoot. Yes, but different. Correct. Yep. Yes. So. Shot, do you know who was shot by? Uh, I forgot his name. Mark I've Weiss. been told. That's right, Mark, Mark Weiss. Weiss yep. Mark Weiss. Yep. So this one, this is purple, and this one, the CD Digipack, and this purple vinyl had the same artwork on it. So you see in it right now, it's slightly different than um, than what was on the one that we just showed. And obviously, the um, the white one is the the signed one with the blue vinyl and has Ace, which is actually his main picture on Facebook right now. If you follow Ace on Facebook, right. So, right. uh, so yeah, those are those are the four vinyls right now. And the other cool thing too, and this is the last piece of, of my notes, um, there is a limited edition bundle that's 500 copies where you get the silver vinyl, the signed blue vinyl, the actual jewel case CD, and a mm-hmm. poster which is the same as the blue vinyl cover. You got the CD, yeah. don't you? I have yeah. the CD. Yep. So remember, guys, there's two versions of the CD. In the United States, you could have a jewel case just like that, and there's a poster right. in there too, right? Yeah, it's the it's the cover. Fold again. up poster. Yep. Let's see it. I'm getting there. Let's see it. Look at that. Very cool. Yep. Very, very cool. And look, there's a bunch of outtakes of the photos there. That's so cool. Yeah. That's pretty neat. So cool. So uh, the U- the United States C D has the jewel case and then the European C D is a digipack that Correct. has that, that different that different artwork on it. So Yeah, so and yes. just to show just to show the inside of, of more of the record, uh, this is the inner sleeve. It's heavy, heavy stock inner sleeve. Yeah. Uh, it's got other other the other releases from E1 on it, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, Andrew's got that too. Uh-huh. And then that's the backside. And the vinyl again, and then the actual backside of the LP is just that. Right. 
And then, uh, and then it does come with a download card, as Andrew mentioned, which we tried to down, down. Andrew tried to download the the content so he could have it to listen to on his phone while he was in his car, and uh, quickly found out wah, that they wah, have wah, they, wah. They, they haven't, haven't, up, they haven't the audio yet because yeah, you know we've got this about a week and a half before beforehand. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, this is this is the cover of the signed edition correct yes that's the cover of the signed edition and that's the poster that you get within the bundle from you that's correct so there's a ton of different configurations the you you can go to e1's uh website their uh brand new direct to consumer website and get the the bundle or buy you know the standard version or the autograph version separately uh which is what i did Mm -hmm. i didn't buy the bundle because i already have most of the components i just bought the the signed edition with the poster separately, which is $65. Great um, price, great price. Yes. Uh, but the orange is is issued for indie record stores in the U.S. only. So it's uh, basically most of the labels do this these days. As if you've been watching this podcast for a long time, I, I work for a vinyl distributor and we get all of the indie, they're called indie retail exclusives. Um, and generally the way that works is we can only sell them or distribute them to record stores that have physical locations. The idea is to get people to go into a physical record store and pick up a copy. That being said, those physical record stores are allowed to sell those indie exclusives on their own websites. So just uh, find the names of some indie record stores in the, the United uh, States. Would you consider the exchange to be an indie record store? It's Just, absolutely an indie record store. Oh, so there are many locations. Several of, the ex- of those are yeah. my, right. Exchange or Bull Moose or Zia or Amoeba, any of those places like that, Newberry Comics or, or there's, you know, over 3000 mom and pop record stores or independent chains that, that exist in the United States. Even though people think record stores are gone, there are plenty of them. Most of them should have them either listed on their website or you can ask them to bring a copy, you know, order a copy in from the label and they can get it for you. So, um, so that's how you do that. Um, that that's really cool. I really, I really do that. Cause I remember when that, that photo first came out, no one knew wh- what, it, what it was or, or what right. it was going to be. So I really, I'm glad that we have some more information on that and hopefully, yeah. you know, we're able to get some copies and we could show them on uh, on a future episode. Well, or, you know, whether we get nice promos from the label or not, I, I'm buying copies through my work. So, uh, so but you, I'll definitely you can do that. I'm going to have to go and schlep out and have to go. <laughs> You're going to have to schlep, buddy. I, ha- I have to schlep. Have to schlep. Uh, one thing else that, that, uh, I was that just going to, Gul- I was just going to talk about that. Yeah. That Ken Gulick sent us, you can talk about it, but he sent us this, co- um, Andrew. Oh, Andrew was showing the front, but. Uh, he's using. They're using these. What he say as promotional tools? Yes, yes. They were uh, given out at the listening party that happened that's right. at uh, at the whiskey a couple weeks ago. That's right. So, uh, so he he was kind enough to send us one of these each. Mm-hmm. They do not come with the packaging. I know that I had posted this in Kiss My Wax yesterday or the day before when when I first got them, mm-hmm. and people were wondering if it came with the the actual packaging. It does not. Um, yeah, if but you, if you want you, one, start your own kiss podcast and maybe you'll get lucky. <laughs> well, for all of you pick collectors out there, you know, here's you another pick to collect. Whoa. <laughs> nice. Drop mine. <laughs> and on the and floor. now Jason's is gone forever. I'm leaving it down. <laughs> it's in the floor at Jason's place. So yeah. just leave it down there. So, uh, so I, I just want to actually talk about the record a little bit. Yeah, let's like talk the about actual, the, the actual songs because, um, we've already heard two songs. We've heard rocking with the boys and, um, there was a Bronx Boy release that just came out. Bronx Boy. Look at that. Yeah, this is not even opened. Let me open it. Oh my God, you're going to open something up on air? I've got about 10 copies of this, so I don't need to... Oh, good. You can send me one. I need to keep it sealed. You have my address. I'll, I expect one tomorrow. Do you not know where you live? <laughs> <laughs> So the, uh, this is the just the, the standard edition of, of Bronx Boy, and it's it's on white vinyl. Hey, that's cool. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead with what you were saying. So I, I just kind of want to talk about this record a little bit because you know we're recording this less than a day after we've gotten these. So yep. um, we, I've listened to it twice all the way through. Listen to it twice uh, all the way through. I've yeah. 
probably two or three times. I tried to play it when I was driving to Nashville yesterday, mm-hmm. but my family was in the car and we were talking. So, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I've probably listened to it a good two times. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, um, and people have either seen on the page or my page or whatever. I, I wasn't the hugest Ace solo material fan. I mean, I enjoyed Anomaly, but I could really take or leave. You know, Space Invader and and uh, and Origins. I just I wasn't a huge fan of all that stuff. However, however. I love this record. I do. I do. Good. You know, I put I dropped the needle on without you I'm nothing and I was like this is this is cool. You know, I thought the production was good and I was on the Kiss FAQ podcast right when Rockin' with the Boys came out and I listened to it a couple times and I just I loved I love that song. It's catchy and it's it's ace. I lo- I love it. Is it as good as the 78 solo album? Probably not. But you know, we get the first three tracks, Without You, I'm Nothing, Rockin' With The Boys, Your Wish Is My Command, which is a Gene song, and if you have the vault, you can kind of listen to where this song came from. Right, that's correct. And uh, there's a couple versions out there, and, uh, you know, it's 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 very cool. Um, what, what is actually the... the, the uh, Rain Keeps Falling is, if you listen to the vault, uh, listen to the, there's a couple different versions of Rain Keeps Falling. I love Rain Keeps Falling. Of course, yes. I, I it, it originally came out as, um, I think it was on one of those CDs uh, from his speaking engagements, was it, was it not? Um, yes. You, well, no, no. The speaking engagement, the Speaking in Tongues DVD had that in a background music. But if you purchase the season one Family Jewels box set, That's it came where it's with at. two songs. Yeah. That's where it's at. I, I love that song. And of yes. course, I'd had the, I'd had the, I'd had the Psycho Circus um, demo. I don't know if they're demos, pre-production, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know if they're pre-production. They may be just pre-mix or something like yeah. that. Anyway, I've got a couple of versions on that, too. I love that song. I absolutely yeah. love that song. Yeah, yeah. But uh, obviously, some of that stuff is is not official, but if you officially want uh, yeah. the version, you could you well, could purchase the vault, and uh, that, that song, Rain Keeps Falling, is on the vault. So, I mean, uh, and I just, I, I didn't really know, I didn't really know, um, that that was not, I, I didn't know that that was the same song. I knew that she had two co-writes on this. So uh, I heard it, and I was like, oh, hey, cool. That That is cool. So anyway, those first three songs, Without You Have Nothing, Rock With The Boys, Your Wish Is My Command, I like them, man. Those will be... I it, do, too. Those will be put in, in rotation on, on my KISS playlist. Uh, mm-hmm. That being said, not a huge fan of Bronx Boy. I personally am not a huge fan of Bronx Boy either. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I mean... It, there's not, I guess there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just, um, I don't know. It's 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 hard hard to say. Uh, it's not my favorite track on the record for sure. You know, it falls down to the bottom. Yeah. So. And, and and what's cool about the, this record is there are a lot of different players on this record, and that's going to work into talking about the next song, Pursuit of Rock and Roll, because I listened to that song and I was like, why do I like this song? Can do you know why I like this song? Why do you like this song, Andrew? Come on, man, you got to know. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you spill the beans. You don't know. I do know. Okay, Anton Fig plays drums on this song. I was gonna let you spill the beans, you and know? I, I am, I, and I think is that the only song he plays drums on? Uh, I haven't looked. No, thoroughly. no, off my back. He plays drums on off my back as well. Yeah. Uh, but, oddly, oddly enough, hey, to, not to interrupt no, you. No. Oddly enough, Pursuit of Rock and Roll and Off My Back are my two favorite songs on the record. Dude. Anton Fig <laughs> needs to play on all Ace Frehley records. I agree, man. I agree totally. I agree totally. So. So I remember listening to this song, and it's actually it's the last song on side A. If you listen to the vinyl, and I remember listening to it, and I go, "Man, that's cool." So I had to like play side A all again because I'm not going to be one of those guys. That's uh, my my actual uh, needle arm. Is that the proper name for it? Your yeah, the tone yeah tone arm. Or, the, yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's fully automatic. So I just hit start, and it just it drops the needle for me automatically. Right. Right. I, I I don't want to be I don't want to mess with those gears. But um, but yeah, and so I had to listen to the side again to, to play it again. And uh, man, super cool. Love that song. I love the production on this song. I know there's been discussions, people saying that, that they don't. I like it. I I like the production on the record. I, I listened to it. I didn't feel it was as nearly as brick walled as. Are you smelling it? Yeah, it smells great. I, I didn't feel it was nearly as brick walled as, as some of the, the past Ace solo re- releases have been or the, or the recent solo re- releases. Um, there's a lot of clean guitar on it that sounds really good. The acoustic uh, recording of the acoustic guitar and some of the tracks are is, is really clean. Um, uh, I I I've enjoyed the record so far. Um, there's a couple of tracks that I I know that I'll probably skip 
most of the time going forward unless they grow on me. But uh, but there's a good there's nine tracks on it and there's you know there's a solid six or seven tracks on here that you know I'll be playing a lot. I can I, imagine even even though I don't really love Bronx Boy, Side A is super strong. Side yeah, I agree. Strong, you know, I agree. Um, I I I really I, I would have the only thing that I would have liked to have seen on this record. I mean, I know he did Fire and Water with Paul on Origins, but how cool would it have been if he co-wrote a song with Paul Stanley on Side B? <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty neat, man. That'd be pretty neat. But, uh, um, but yeah, man, I, I, this is the first... I mean, we were given you know copies of Anomaly, we were given copies of Space Invader and Origins, all that good stuff, but I gotta tell you, I, I like this, and I'm probably going to be listening to this more today. Well, maybe not so much today because uh, for those of you guys You'll that be don't, editing an episode. Well, that, but even, but also too for you guys that don't know, uh, Steve Perry just released a new record, his first solo record in 24 years, and even though it came out yesterday, and I was promised it yesterday, I should have it today. <laughs> I should have it. Today. Hopefully, you do. Yeah, it says out for delivery, so it's probably on my stoop right now. Let's let's uh, let's let's hope on that. But yeah, uh, what, any parting thoughts on Spaceman? Uh, well, I did want to, I was, um, reading through some notes that we got from the label uh-huh. and I wanted to point out that, uh, apparently we, we only have the one vinyl edition, which is, you know, the standard, uh, silver edition, Yes. but apparently all the U S vinyl editions will have different inner sleeve images on one side, oh. candid shots from the photo shoot. So you will have different inner sleeves as well as different so, covers. So it looks like this will be the standard correct. sleeve, and then back here you will have different outtakes. Different photos from that outtake. That's yeah. that's that's correct. So um, so yeah, I'll have to say, man, I'm really looking forward to that orange indie uh, release. Me too. Me too. Because it's it's probably my favorite cover uh, that Ace has done in a long yeah. long time. I, I think it's it's uh, super cool. Yeah, so. and it's a it's a it's a cool tip of the hat to Elvis. And yeah. um, uh, Bon Jovi did the same thing too. Yeah, uh, on his He's, box set that he that he released a while he ago. But uh, but yeah, I mean, head on over to E One Entertainment. But hit but you know, if you don't want to head over to E One Entertainment's website or Ace's website, go to your local record store, pick this up. The street date in this one is Friday, October nineteenth, which it That's actually right. says that on the pick. It says Spaceman Cometh ten nineteen eighteen. So right. make sure to make sure to pick this up because we hope even though Kiss. The end of the road is happening. We hope that um, Ace continues to release albums after Kiss. Uh, but yeah, man, I I like this, and I'm not just saying that because you know me. You, I remember the last Ace show that we had, which was actually posted one year ago today. If you look at your memories on Facebook, um, we were talking about Anomaly Deluxe. But uh, I I like this record, and and I and I haven't loved I haven't loved any Ace solo material since Trouble Walking. I mean, I, I like Anomaly. But I, I love Trouble Walking, and I, I love this record too, man. I'm going to play the shit out of this. Play the shit out of it. I'm going to play the shit out of it, and loud. Good. And loud. Good. And loud. And loud. Any more thoughts? No, no, I'm good. What, what do you got? What do you got? I don't think I've got any thoughts. You know, I just, uh, you know, uh, E1 is really um, up the bar here with uh, variants, and they're not... Um, Minor variations. They're really cool. Different covers on each one. You know, four different album covers on vinyl. That's super cool to me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in different colors of vinyl. Yes. I, I'm excited to have all of them. And I'm sure yeah. when we record next, um, I think we're recording on the 19th. We're we actually on recording on the 19th yeah. on, on the release date. Ho- hopefully, uh, we'll have copies of, of some of the other versions. So, yeah. Um, We'll see, or at least I'll, I'll have them. I don't know. Maybe Andrew won't. I will. <laughs> I'm coming so, there. I'm coming there to get my... coming here. I'm coming so. there to get the... So Ace Freely gotcha. Spaceman, street date, October 19th. Yep. Uh, make sure you get your copy. Hey, hey, I hope Ace tours. I hope Ace, Ace tours for this. I hope he does. Well, he may be touring with Kiss. You never know. What? What? <laughs> I don't know. You never know. He you may never, be. You never know with this. It, you this. never know. You never know. So I uh, want to thank uh, uh, Ken Gulick and E1... Yes for uh, hooking us up with the promos um, to show on the on the show and all of his continued support over the, the years with the, the podcast. And, um, and thank you guys for watching. And if we got nothing else, you got nothing else? Nothing else, man. 
we'll see you on the next see one. See you on the next one. I just wanted to say, hey, don't. <laughs> <laughs>